So uh, hello everybody, my name is Rich um, and today we're going to be covering how to find prospects and clients using social media um, and we're going to cover, we're going to just look at the two social media channels which I think gives you the best opportunity to do this, certainly without having to give them any money um, and so we're going to be focusing on Twitter and LinkedIn, um, you'll see as we go through but I think there's, there's a lot of things, practical actions hopefully you can take away from this that you'll be able to implement um, and help you kind of get out there and reach more kind of relevant people on these platforms. So to start with, um, just to kind of share almost kind of tips that would apply across all social media channels, but particularly these two that we'll cover, Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, the first one is to obviously just look at your existing connections. I know this is something that I've been guilty of in the past is you, you might be surprised at how many connections you've got on Twitter or LinkedIn and who they are. So it's not a bad thing to kind of go through and look at um, who are your existing connections and maybe they might be able to help you with introductions it might just uh, ref refresh kind of rejog your memory of people that you know that you might be able to get re uh, reconnected with so go through and have a look at your existing connections you could probably use it as an opportunity to maybe kind of clean it up a bit if there are people that you know you're not going to have much uh, interaction with but uh, but certainly don't rule it out i think everybody's always looking for like new people but you know a lot of people you might already know you might be able to engage with um, and they might still provide useful um, uh, referrers into your business or they might be able to um, be your potential prospects and clients for yourself. Um, the other thing that we recommend that you do as well is that you can look at who your clients, suppliers and there's a competitors as well are, are looking at. Um, you can go and certainly on Twitter, it's probably a bit easier to do this. You can do this on LinkedIn as well. But you can look at who who they who are they following, who are they connected with, and again, you can just go down those lists. Might give you some ideas of um, who else you could be following, um, who you might look to engage with. Uh, if, what what we find as well is interesting with this is it can give you a good insight into a, a lot of other businesses. I'm, so I'm based in Worcester. I've lived in Worcester all my life. Been kind of doing the network scene here in Worcester for you know 10 years or so and there's still some businesses in the middle of Worcester city centre that I will stumble across on Twitter I stumbled upon one last week and I'd never heard of them before they were really good kind of connection to make so I always find it quite surprising but it's worth just going and have a look around see who your clients are following and connected with maybe your suppliers or partners that you work with but then also your competitors go and see what they're up to as well and it just gives you a good idea to make sure you're not kind of missing out on you know a, a nice kind of chunk of people and the, the final tip with this to start with, and it, it's something that hopefully you'll take away from today's session is really this underlying aspect of this is these tips and kind of strategies that we'll share with you. It's all about raising your awareness and your visibility in front of the right people. And um, you need to look at this more as a conversation starter rather than kind of like a conversion tool. So it's a really effective way to do that. And by you going and following someone's Twitter feed or connecting with them on LinkedIn and then engaging with their social media content. So retweeting, commenting, liking, sharing, all those sorts of engagement activities that you can do on social media. If you do something, do one of those things to that person's social media feed, they get a notification that you've done that. So immediately they will become a little bit more aware about who you are. So it's something that I've used to great effect in the past, to be honest, where there's been introductions, there's been people I've wanted to make connections with and try and have a conversation with. And I have gone and found them on social media first. I make sure that I follow them on Twitter. I see, you know, I send a connection request on LinkedIn. I may not even do that to start with, actually. But I'd certainly go and follow them on Twitter, engage with what they're tweeting about, comment, share it like it all those sorts of things so they at least start to become aware of my existence or almost and then over time you know i might do that for a couple of months and then usually it's not an exact science but usually on these platforms if you like or retweet or engage with some of my stuff i might do the same back um, as a kind of thank you and if they start to do that with you then I've always used that as my signal of, okay, that's now time to send maybe the LinkedIn connection, or that might be the time to try and get their email address off their website or try and give them a call and um, engage with them that way. But you've kind of done that two or three months where you've just kind of made yourself aware, uh, you've, you've made yourself aware to them and you can just build up that visibility. So um, one of the things that we say, like I said, it is a conversation starter and 
it is a lot like networking itself. Um, there's a, an article that I wrote uh, a few months ago that was actually featured um, with a, um, a big business coach over in America on, their, on her YouTube channel, which was about how social media is like networking. It's just on social media you meet every day. Now, it's not to say you have to attend every day, but like with networking, you do have to attend regularly and put a little bit in and engage with people to expect something back. And so this is where I'm going to kind of tee up and pass over to Dan a bit because uh, he's got some really good kind of tips and techniques I know that he uses in terms of networking, we think is very applicable uh, with social media. Well, thanks, Rich. Um, yeah, so my, my background is I've been networking for probably the best part of 10 years, really, um, primarily in uh, the BNI network, but also in sort of smaller groups and ad hoc groups and uh, attending. And a lot of what I've tried to think about is you wouldn't walk into a, um, a networking room and just stand on the table and shout what you do and what promotion you've got going on. So kind of people going on social media and splurting out this stuff doesn't really work in the same way. Um, you know, I, I think about some of the tips I wrote down, or I think about the way I dress, the, the way I would talk about the business, um, especially with, you know, on my background, you can see the amount of services we do. Um, I generally talk about pain points and things like that, that might um, be relevant to people in the room um, but a lot of what happens actually I'm listening first <clears throat> so the same way Rich said um, about you know looking at their opportunities looking at what's going on in their social media I tend to do that a lot more on social media and in networking as well so as you're listening to other people you're looking at what businesses are in um, you're looking at whether they're part of a franchise whether they're independent whether it's the business owner um, and also just kind of looking for clues on ways that you can engage with them and then when relevant you're engaging in a more thought out way um, and measured way so for example if you know you've got lots of clients in a um, financial sector and you're trying to connect with those people you'd maybe just watch them and monitor how much they're on there and then when ready and suitable you can engage um, with them um, I think from a posting point of view and one of the things I like to consider is there's lots of people in lots of industries. So when you're looking at people the same, um, so for example, like a photographer, if everyone puts lots of pictures up there um, and they look really good, you know, all you're measured on is, you know, the quality of the pictures. Whereas what I try and think about when you're uh, presenting on, on social media is getting into the business. So have you got a picture of the photographer taking a photo or have you got pictures behind the scenes? So, when you can relate that back to your industry, are you talking about um, just the normal boring stuff or the kind of the surface level stuff? Or are you trying to be a bit stand, stand out and be a bit different, really? So I think they're the two sides that sort of present the way that you're presenting and think about what you're posting and putting up there. And also the way that you can start those social interactions on social media. Um, so Rich used the example of uh, Twitter, for example, as soon as you follow somebody, it comes up with an email in their inbox. Now the email comes up with your logo, your company name and your description. If you haven't filled those in to start off with, you've kind of wasted that. So I think there's a bit of, it's a bit like getting dressed before you go to the networking, before you start poking around, you don't want to present yourself in a bad way. So that's the sort of thing where I think it's about preparation and using the analogy of what you do when you walk into a networking room and what you take with you, what you've got prepared is exactly the same as sorting out your own social media before you start poking around at potential clients or competitors or anyone really. So that's some of the cross-linking that I've kind of learned about the platforms. Now there is a lot of cross-linking. I think there's a lot to learn from it. And I think the biggest one is just not being stupid by going into a room and shouting what you do. It's kind of that nurturing those relationships up. And some people might be attracted with a, a sales call or a sales promotion that you put on your social media, but it's not normally the normal. Uh, way that people interact with it so you might get lucky occasionally but I think it's all about nurturing those relationships the same way as you would in a networking group. Yeah it is I think it's a really good point around um, making sure yeah you're kind of dressed appropriately I think it's a really good analogy for it that that if you start connecting with more people on social media if you start being more active on social media the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your profile so you do want to make sure that it's all kind of up to speed you know that everything everything's up to date uh, we we use the term optimize uh, but you know that can mean just making sure like Dan said your logo is correct your details are correct your contact details are on there um, and that that's one of the things that obviously we won't um, have time to go through today um, and we might do a, a, um, a follow-up on a how-to session on that sort of thing but if you do add any questions or you wanted to go more around your 
particular profiles and how to kind of get them more optimized, then again, that's something you can kind of take advantage of the free follow up call that we can we can certainly help you with and have a chat about. Um, so moving on then, um, Twitter to start with, um, and in particular, what I wanted to cover is the whole issue around hashtags and the whole um, the whole thing about them. So apologies if I'm teaching anybody to suck eggs with this, but um, for me, hashtags um, they're they're a form of indexing. That's how I, I'd see it. So you can put a hashtag at the end of a tweet and that will index, that will list that tweet with all the other tweets in the world that include that hashtag. That's, that's kind of roughly what it does. Now it's different. They take different forms and they have different purposes, but it is this kind of form of indexing. And what we've noticed is that you can uh, use it to find your target groups very very effectively uh, and I'll come on to that in, in the next slide about the different kind of types of hashtags we can use but that's the key thing and it's worth spending that little bit of time thinking about the hashtags that you might want to use that are going to get you in front of the right people so I'll, I'll explain that I'll explain that in a minute but in terms of in terms of what we're going to do um, one of the biggest mistakes that we make with this um, with this sort of thing is that people will put hashtags for um what they're in what their kind of what their industry is so for example we've seen it where an accountant will put you know something of they, they've tweeted something and it might be quite an interesting thing but then they'll put hashtag accountancy at the bottom of it now that will index that tweet with all the other tweets out there that have got hashtag accountancy but if you're being honest who's looking at the hashtag hashtag accountancy other than accountants and you know i can say that with some confidence because uh, this this is something that we we have done in the past. We you know we have been guilty of it a bit, where uh, so the I would put something and I would I would kind of finish the tweet with hashtag social media. Now that indexes that tweet with all the other tweets out there that have hashtag social media. Now I've gone through and I've looked through that list of um, tweets that include the hashtag social media, and I would say ninety ninety five percent of them are other social media people offering social media services and digital marketing agencies. So for me, that's one of the mistakes I think people make. I've seen it a lot given as kind of advice that you might look to do, but I wouldn't be too keen on um, trying to kind of just cram a couple of hashtags in and put hashtag accountancy, hashtag accountant, that sort of thing. You want to try and think a little bit outside the box and think about who your target audience is and what hashtags are they using for you to get the right visibility. And so with that, you, um, we kind of break it down. There's, there's different types of hashtags. The one that we found that does work really well for us, and I think really um, highlights this, um, explains this quite well, is you can use almost like industry specific ones. So we've got clients, we've got a client who um, they're actually uh, they're a worldwide client. Their their head office is actually in Germany. And they do have a presence here in the UK. And what they wanted to do when they came to us was they wanted a better they wanted better visibility. They wanted to start reaching out and raising their profile within the manufacturing industry in the UK. Now we did our research, and there is a hashtag out there which is hashtag UKMFG United Kingdom Manufacturing, and that is an industry used hashtag so all the big businesses a lot of people who are involved in manufacturing in the uk use that hashtag and here's this company who want to increase their visibility within the manufacturing industry in the uk so we can start using that hashtag and that indexes their tweets along with all the others and we know that their target industry uses engages looks at that hashtag so we've been able to kind of place our client in that group even though most of those people won't initially have heard of the client and they might not even be following them on social media. Um, but because they put that hashtag in, that gets them that visibility. So that's one of the things I would kind of recommend you think of. And there's a, there's a few, um, there's a few websites, there's a few tools out there. Again, we're happy to share those in the one, uh, if you want to book a one-to-one, -one. but just start looking at it. Just type in the different hashtags again, maybe look at what, competitors suppliers clients are using just to get a feel for it but you know there are a lot of those out there and take that little bit of time just to identify okay who your target industry is and are is there something like hashtag UKMFG is there an equivalent of that that I can start using to raise my awareness I can I can talk to that audience in a certain way 
The second type, which uh, I know some of you will be uh, familiar with, is these kind of location specific ones. So these are mainly like the Twitter hours. So I said, I'm based here in Worcester. There's one which is Worcestershire, which is a very successful, very popular one. But these Twitter hours take place pretty much all over the country and you can find your kind of local regional one. But that, that's a very good tool. If you're looking to raise your awareness within a certain area, then that you can do that as well. So, you know, as a, as a business, you know, and as what we recommend to our clients and people that we help, if they are looking to raise their, raise their visibility, you know, improve their awareness and get more, uh, get their, their brand name and their company information out there in front of more um, Worcestershire based small to medium sized businesses, then we recommend that they will go and tweet and engage with something like Worcestershire Hour because there's usually probably between 300 and 500, probably even more businesses every week that will go onto Twitter and will be engaging using that hashtag and looking at that. So if you can go in there, you can add those tweets, you add that hashtag to your tweets, yours then indexes with those. So immediately you can get some visibility locally. So two kind of different types there. You can look at industry wide, or you can look at kind of local region, regional, regional wise. And I suspect the regional one is probably the easier one to find and the one you'll probably get more success out of, but they're both pretty good to do and worth spending a little bit of time looking through. The final one, because I know a lot of people have asked me about this before is around starting up your own hashtag and you can, you can start your own hashtag. You don't have to, it's not like a kind of web address or something. You don't have to register it. You don't have to buy them or you don't copyright them or anything, but you can start your own. You'd obviously have to be aware that, you know, there might be people already using a similar one to that. Um, and well, a similar one, the same, the same one. So you would kind of have to piggyback or be involved with that one. Um, but we have, we have done this with some of our clients and it, it can work well. The, the thing to note about it is this is a real long term game um, game with this sort of thing. So we had a we've had a client and they want they did a series of video blogs, uh, like one minute, one, you know, two minute little video blogs, business video blogs every week. And they we recorded these for them and we published them for them. And they put out a video without fail every Wednesday for two and a half years with these videos so there's a lot of videos you know it took obviously like 100 you know nearly 150 short little videos but we put on every time we put about that video we, we included a hashtag which was specific to that series and then after a while if you did see one of those videos and you wanted to watch more of them that indexing system used because you could just click on that hashtag and then it would bring up all the other videos in that series so you could kind of look through them so that worked really really well um, but you've always got to remember that you're the only people um you're the only person using that hashtag initially so for the first five or six months it might not look very good or very popular but it is something to keep going i wouldn't you i what we didn't do was um kind of overkill it so we only use that hashtag on those relevant videos so we didn't put that hashtag on every single one of their posts there's no point because that's just your twitter feed that people can look at so i wouldn't put it on all of them but you can start using your own hashtag Ultimately, what you're hoping for with these things is then other people start to use that hashtag as well and to engage with you. But it can work, but it is a very long game. And if you're new to it or you're still trying to kind of decide almost what the best hashtag strategy is for this sort of thing, I would recommend you look at industry specific or location specific hashtags. So moving on to LinkedIn um, and if we take a um, take aside that you know LinkedIn is another social media platform where you can post, um, you can put posts, you can publish articles, you can do all these sorts of things, kind of like an online CV as well. In this, for for the purposes of this, and something we always say with this is, think of it like a giant phone book. You know, LinkedIn is the best of the social media channels for this, um, in the sense that it, it gives you a lot of information. There's a huge database there that you can go out and use. The biggest difference that LinkedIn and the biggest strength that LinkedIn has over all of the social media channels and even the giant in all this in Facebook is everybody tells LinkedIn where they work and what their job title is. That's the first two things you tell LinkedIn. To put it into context, probably between eight and 10% of people on Facebook would tell, um, would tell Facebook that. You know, so that just gives you an idea. So it's a really, really effective way um, to find people. 
and think you use it for those means use it like a giant phone book it is it is brilliant for this sort of thing and when you're on linkedin and if you click on your network and then click on connections you do have the option you can start to search so if, if you have got a name for somebody go and find them on linkedin connect with them what you can also do is you can search a business because most businesses are linked to um are listed on linkedin and because people say where they work you can go and do it. So the example I always give is uh, here in Worcester, there's some big solicitor firms. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to find someone relevant in that industry to talk to, then I could go on their LinkedIn company page. There's a link on there that tells me, and it gives me a list of everybody who works for that company who are in LinkedIn. And there's probably 150, 200 people. And I can scroll down that list and I can see everybody's name and I can see everybody's job title and I can find the person who I want to speak to within that business. And if, even if that's all you use it for, because you may choose not to connect with them directly on LinkedIn, at least you've got a name and a, and a job title. So when you maybe call them up or send them an email or you're in your network meeting next and you're asking for a referral, you can say, rather than saying, I'm looking... I, I want to speak to anyone who is a procurement manager or a, um, a HR manager for a solicitor company. You can say, oh, does anybody know Jane Smith? She's the HR manager for low, such and such a um, solicitor firm. So it just gives you that opportunity. So it's a really, really powerful tool. When you're in that section as well, there's also um, a button you can click, which is search with filters. Um, and this is amazing, to be honest. And I think when we... Um, pre-lockdown we would run a lot of these training courses and we would spend a lot of time going through this aspect this was probably one of the things that everybody found most useful and most exciting about it is as well as searching company name and job title you could if you do search with filters and click all filters you can actually search by industry and you can search by location so um if i did those things on my social media profile it can bring up everybody who i'm connected with who live in worcester and it will just filter out my connections. So it will show me everybody I'm connected with in Worcester. I can then filter that down again by industry, and I might put everybody who I'm connected with who lives in Worcester who works in the financial industry, and it will bring me up a list of the 50 people that I'm connected with. You can also change that, and you can say, okay, give me a list of everybody that I'm not connected with who lives in Worcester who's in the financial industry, and that will give me a big list of people again who I'm not connected with, but I might want to be. So that's again about growing this audience and I can get names, I can get job titles, I can get company names, I might connect with them directly on LinkedIn, I might go and find them on Twitter. But again, I've got my, I've got my kind of list now of who I'm looking to engage with and I can start that process again, like we said at the start. Um, I can start to look to engage with them, I can start to learn a little bit more about them. So like Dan was saying, give, um, to maybe start a conversation with them. But I can engage with their social media content i can raise my awareness of uh, in front of them and you can kind of build it up that way so it's one of the things i would really recommend with this is you go away have a look at um searching searching out people on linkedin using name but certainly business company name I, I would give that one a go i think that was a really really useful one but have a click around click in search with filters and then all filters and you'll be surprised about how you can kind of cut this database down you can find some really interesting mini lists of people that you can kind of go through and look to engage with so um another part of linkedin um that we found very very interesting is around groups and events which have, you, some of you have probably seen events have uh, started to come to the fore more on linkedin in the last six months or so but I would think so with groups, um, they're um, like hashtags, you've got to find the relevant groups. So there are groups on there. There are there are groups in LinkedIn, which will be industry specific. So you are, if you are looking to raise your profile and connect with more people in a certain industry, there will be groups on LinkedIn that have these groups of industry specialists in. So you can go and join that group and it will give you a list of the people that are in that group. So you may choose to engage with them personally or you may just look to start engaging with the group conversation and raise your awareness that way there are also regional ones so the one that we probably see the most success with is uh, around the chamber of commerce so most chamber of commerce have a linkedin group and obviously just by what they do and the fact that they're they're regionalized they will give you again a list 
of you know hundreds you know many thousands of people who are local business people in and around that area so again i'm i'm here in worcester and uh, there's the hereford and worcester chamber of commerce they've got a linkedin group i think it's got about 17 1800 people in it and i can be a member of that group that gives me a list of you know other local business people i might want to connect with it gives me a, a group that i can start discussions with Again, like was Dan was saying, you know, you don't walk into that group, stand on your chair and shout, you've got twenty percent off. Use it as a conversation starter, and you can start to identify these people and and, um, and look to build it up. In terms of events, they're still quite new on LinkedIn, but I would just keep an eye on them. So you've probably had it if if you are uh, if you are quite a, a regular active user of LinkedIn, you've probably been invited to a LinkedIn event um, recently. Um, they're a little bit like Facebook events, but to be honest, just not as good at the moment in the way they're set up. But it does give you a good option again. So um, you can be invited to an event. You can see who's attending an event. And again, you can use that as a means to um, make some connections, get your, get your awareness in those right type of places. So they're not as good as groups at the moment, but, they, but as LinkedIn kind of ups its game and improves the tool that it gives you within events, that's become, gonna become a really interesting thing. And I think post lockdown, probably now in next year in 2021, when we can start, when um, like big kind of face-to-face -face events happen again, um, like expos or networking events, companies will be setting up the the event on linkedin as a way of promoting it so there might be a big expo happening locally and the organizers create it as an event on linkedin they'll go and in, invite a load of people to that event who they want to come a load of people will say who if they're attending that event and even if you can't make that event that gives you a way to see who's attending and decide if it's worth going or use it as a connection thing so it's not that good at the moment, but it will be that good at some stage. So just keep an eye on the events thing. Um, and as I've been saying through all of this, it's this is a way of increasing your awareness and your visibility. Um, and you can find these groups of people, find these kind of pockets of um, people that you want, that are your target audience. Spend that time figuring out who they are and then where, where, where they are on social media in terms of what hashtags might they be using, geographically where are they based so what hashtags are relevant to them and what groups may they be connected with on you know on linkedin and use that again and it's this ability to raise the awareness and your visibility um, raise the awareness and the visibility um, and then you can start to kind of start the conversation so um in in summary with this really I appreciate it. it's a bit of a whistle stop tour but tour but it's it's kind of what we try to achieve with these things is give you some ideas Hopefully give you some action points you can go away and look at. Um, and then, yeah, if you do have any questions, you can come back and book a one-to-one. -one. But I would say find relevant hashtags and groups um, that are either industry relevant or geographically relevant. Take the time to go and have a look through some of those and engage and connect with people in that way. Um, search your contacts, but also, uh, you know, other people's connections, because there might be some people lurking in your LinkedIn contacts or Twitter followers that you didn't realize that you could start conversations up with. Um, but again, you can use other people's to see what they're doing. But above all, really, really look at this as a conversation starter and not a conversion tool. And this is something we've seen across the board, actually, with everything we're doing at the moment, from paid ads to email campaigns to organic social media. Um, a lot of it at the moment is how can we start a conversation? How can you get a conversation going with a prospect? And it might be that you find them on Twitter and you engage with them that way and you follow them and retweet some of their stuff and then you connect with them on LinkedIn and you send a message or two. You might engage with them, engage with their content on LinkedIn by commenting and sharing. But ultimately what you're trying to do is send them a message saying, it'd be great if we could have a phone call so we could have a chat. That's really what you're working towards with this. And I think sometimes everybody thinks that social media is going to be this kind of silver bullet or you know, it's just this, this answer that, that's going to kind of do all the work for you. Unfortunately, it's not, but it does give you a really good um, way to do some of this stuff. So as a conversation, use it as a conversation starter, and then hopefully you can migrate that or leave the platform move it into maybe an email conversation or a telephone conversation or when we're allowed to again a face-to-face -face conversation and that's that sort of way that you can build it up so just a quick reminder um these slides will be available 
um, well, I'll email that out to everybody tomorrow. Um, if you do want a free follow one to one with myself, you can. We can look more at what maybe hashtags and groups might be relevant for you. You know, we could spend some time having a look at that. Or if you did want to make sure that your social media profiles are a bit more kind of ship shape and kind of dressed, dressed for networking, as Dan said, you know, we can start, start looking at that. Um, and next week's how to session is going to be around uh, social media ads, particularly focusing on Facebook ads. So if it's something that you've been doing and want to get better results from them, or if you're just curious about what this whole paid ad thing is and the potential of it, then you're always welcome to um, come along and, and, and listen to, you know, what's kind of going on in the paid ads world, because um, it's really quite interesting and quite incredible, the sort of things you can do. So, um, like I said, that's the, that's the session for next week is how to get um, better results from your social media ads. Um, 